Okay, we've got sand and there's reef. We just passed it, my camera was going off. That's using my Navionics chart, which you can't see. That's giving me a satellite image that I know there's sand and then there's a big reef system out here. Um, I'll just go over it again. The wind is an east south east I want to anchor up, fairly up. So I reckon the bite time I've already missed it, but look, I don't give a shit. I am going for snapper and um, let's get into it. Pretty excited. The tricky bit is to make sure your, your anchor's set. I can never get that right. First things first, got a soft plastic, a pilchard. I saw Matt and the crew from uh, Coastal Fish and Mayhem. They use this softy, so. I haven't burned it up yet, but I want to put something in the water first. So I've got a circle hook and half a pilchard. Still frozen. I can't wait for it to defrost. Might have free spool on this one. So I just saw a little squid come up to my bait. A bit of a bonus. Oh, there he's over there. Got him. There you go. So the squid <laughs> was chasing the muley, and uh, now I chased him. Now I might use this guy for bait later on, but that's a great, great sign. Awesome. Right, so what I had to do is actually reset the anchor and get a bit closer to the reef. I was about 50 metres away. I just want to get a bit more closer, and uh, but I think I'm in the spot. <laughs> Cash your fingers crossed. I mean, I'll be happy for some life, you know. Skippy would be great. Snapper, oh, look, that is intended species, I must admit. And uh, yeah, I'm just really gonna give it a shot. Bash bound by this wind. Anyway, I just caught a wrasse, and I'm gonna use this as a live bait. And uh, that'll be candy for any snapper around the place, so let's see how we do this one. That's if the birds don't get to it, the bloody mongrels. Really choppy conditions. Yeah, it's getting gnarly. Well, I can make it back, but. <sighs> Alright, so I'm mucking around here. It could be just a rat. Oh. Right. Yeah, big size rats. Now. They're not bad, you're eating, you know. In fact, I might do a catch cook on this one. Really slimy. It's not the intended species, but uh, it's kept me uh, busy. I really want to move in closer, but I'm more than certain my anchor's stuck in the reef. Not a price catch by any day, but still. Fish and chips might be on the menu today. <laughs> so I got the squid. I actually caught a snook. You guys didn't see because the camera wasn't working. So, three fish, another 10 minutes, we might call it. Actually, before I move, I just saw this shark come past. Um, I might go for the shark, he wasn't that big. Oh, no, I haven't got the gear set up for it, but. Awesome. I saved my anchor. Good thing about having a stronger boat as opposed to a tinny. I've got more horsepower to reverse. Pulled it out, which is great. Anyway, it's getting a bit closer. And the temperature looks good, but yeah, it's been here too long. Saw the shark. Could have been a tiger shark. It probably would have been maybe oh, only two meters. But uh, I'll go in close and see what I can come up with. These are the conditions I'm dealing with. It's not bad, it's just windy and choppy. 
Oh, right, so my sound was really lit up. All these rats and kind of stuff. What I'm going to do is actually put the camera down there and have a look to see what kind of fish down there. And just, I love to see, I love watching underwater footage. I actually caught a skippy before, just on the size. This skippy would be great. Got mine, skippy. I think I've got one here. Oh, this one here's the uh, future head on the circle hook. I reckon it's a skippy. Oh, it's actually not bad. Oh, nice skippy. Yeah, and the sound is lit up big time. That's what I'm talking about. I'm happy with a, f a few of these. So that's just bloody awesome. <laughs> Not big jumbo size, but you know, it's about 30, 35. And the sound is just, have a look. Yeah. Right. Fish all over the place. So this one here took off. Again, it's got the pilchard half head. I think it's a skiffy, but it's actually got a bit of weight. Oh, Ooh, it's actually moved around the boat. Oh yeah, here's a skiffy. Oh, he's a dinosaur skiffy. Check this out. Dinosaur skiffy. I thought it was maybe a baby snapper or something. But look at that. Just on the lip too. Circle hook. That's got to be a PB for me, I skip it. And oh, that's really made me day. It's made it worthwhile. That's a beautiful fish. Well, I'm making, I'm making something out of a, a not a bad day. Um, it is windy. 
That's Saturday. It's the only time I can really go fishing, Saturday, Sundays. And I've just got to take the opportunity. Um, it's my karma that every time I go fishing, the weather is not the best. But I'm just happy with that. Stop. Woo! Backing up. I'm pretty happy. Don't know if you can hear me, but these are conditions I've been dealing with. It's just as close as wind. Yeah, it's not dangerous because it's so hard to get that anchor on and I think I'm on the reef so yeah, it happened twice. This is the catch. I am actually quite pleased. I got the rass. Right, at first I thought that was it but then after some fine skippy or chevelli. That's a nice one too. There was another one here. He just made the size. One calamari. And that's the snook I got before too. So all in all, I reckon that's not a bad feed on a windy day. I had a great time. I'm going to pack up, get out of here and do a catch and cook. You yeah, beauty. And that's what fishing's about. I mean, yeah, okay, I was targeting the biggest pieces. Um, didn't happen. I'm not really fussed because i got a feed and that's what I'm all about. I am pretty super confident that, you know, the more I... Oh, shit. The more time and effort I put out here, I will catch these big fish, but it's not, um, you know, I mean, I was super confident today with this wind. Just sort of puts it down and stuff. I'm gonna get to my spot oh, again. Anyway, let's go. Love that underwater, underwater footage of these fine specimen, the skippy, cooking today on a crispy fish and chips battered style dinner or lunch. It's going to be fantastic. One cup. Make sure to use self-raising flour. It's corn flour. You can use rice flour. I haven't got any, so that's why I'm using this. Just a little bit, probably about two tablespoons. Add in some salt, other herbs and spices. I've just got here uh, a general barbecue mix. Not really going to make any difference. And just give it a good stir. Make sure you get all the ingredients all mixed up. The trick for a crispy fish and chip style battered fish is to put this without the beer in the fridge or the freezer, it has to be cold. Later, we will put the beer in it just before we cook it. So if you're looking at getting one of these uh, cups to support the show, they're great for cups of coffee, tea, as well as a, a nice mother lager. Message me on Facebook or Instagram. It's not on my official website, I am doing this by home. Um, the good value, 20 bucks each. Let me know and you get yourself a nice souvenir. Oh, that tastes really good. To show you how you cook up flitter wraps. They are tricky because they are slimy, but they're not that bad. You need a sharp knife. I've got one of these Japanese knives which I just love. It was gifted to me. I'm not pushing the product, I'm not a salesman. What you see on my show is what I do for myself. They just slice along there. It's quite flesh. A lot of people don't use grass for a meal but when you're out in the ocean spend a lot of time trying to catch a bigger fish these are these aren't a bad consolation I mean look at that nice and fresh battered cooked up that's just a delicious piece of meat that's a skippy I wouldn't fill it one A lot of people were saying, why don't you have it sashimi? I've tried it, but I'm just not a big fan of raw fish at all. So I'm not going to pretend to like it just for the sake of views. I just don't like raw fish. Full stop. 
at those beautiful fish fillets. That's the wrasse. That's another one. We'll put it on a bit of absorbent paper because it needs to be quite dry. And that's the trick about getting the nice and crispy. So I get all these fish fillets here. It's best to salt the fillets before you put them in the batter. Trick as well, which I saw the other day, is just a bit of flour. I'm using corn flour. It was actually in the freezer, nice and cold. I'm just going to pour in some beer. It's the plain old lager would do. And whisk it up. Now you can have it. You can have it thick. If you like it thick, or you can have a medium or thin sole. I'm going to go in between. I meant to use a whisker, but uh, I've only got I've only got your fork here. Juice. Right. With the first fillet. Get it there. These are the Trevelli fillets, small pieces. Another Trevelli piece right there. Yeah, it has gone a bit thin, but that's fine. Thin coat would be good. Hello, fry pan, so I didn't even turn the fillets over. Done. Just pick them up, try and get as much oil off as possible, and put them into a colander. Later, we'll put them into a absorbent paper. All right, guys, sorry for the voiceover. My buddy microphone died on me in the last few minutes. Anyway, it's just the usual crunch, yummy. Beautiful, nice and warm, crispy, absolutely delicious. Rass, Skippy, Snook, mate, this is the best meal I've had for a while. Nice and easy, crispy battered fish and chips. Mate, we've had the chips. <laughs> if you like it, you know what to do. Subscribe. We'll see you next time. And uh, Dom Appetit. Daka. Fish. Daka, man. Fish. Tucker, fish, Tucker, the fish, Tucker man.